Welcome back, guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's take a look at JS8 Call version 2.0. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Guys, before we get going on today's video, got to give a shout out to Jim Floyd and Tim Broom. Those guys are my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel as well, there's a link in the description below. Okay, before we get to uh, some of the new features in 2.0, let's take a look at some of the new settings. So under File and Settings, you'll notice a brand new tab right here. Now I'm under the General and then I'm under Networking and Auto Reply. This is something that is uh, a brand new tab in 2.0, and it's got a few uh, features we want to take a look at. Uh, so the first one is allowing heartbeat transmissions outside of the subchannel, uh, heartbeat subchannels. This, this one has been available in the past, but it's just moved to a new location. We uh, can also put a check mark here and pause heartbeat transmissions while we're in a QSO. Uh, and, and you'll note right here that a, uh, a call sign has to be selected. So that means we would have a call sign selected over here from the list. Uh, something else that's new is the ability to say uh, we never want to act heartbeats from these call signs. So maybe we've got somebody really close by uh, that we just don't want to acknowledge every single time. We can put those in here, and if we separate them with commas, we can put multiple stations in this box right here. Coming on down, you'll notice I do have a check mark here. Um... I want to turn on auto reply at startup. Uh, specific for me, I have some automation that happens on my system where JS8 call gets closed a couple of times during the day and reopened. I want auto to be uh, enabled when JS8 call gets reopened without me having to interface with the application at all. So I like to have this set by default. Right below that, uh, you can disable message relay when you have your auto reply enabled. Uh, I prefer to leave that on because if somebody wants to use my station to relay a message to someone that they can't hear, well, I want them to be able to do that. So I don't want to disable message relays. It's just good for the community. Now, you could also go a step further and say only auto reply to these call signs. Again, if you're going to put multiples in, you'll just separate them with a comma, and those would be entered into this box here. You can also say never auto reply to these call signs. So if you don't want to acknowledge uh, one particular station or the other, you could enter that into this box. And then this is just something here uh, to disable um, auto replies after X number of minutes of inactivity, and you can set that to what you like. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, a really cool new feature that Jordan has introduced in this, and that is Type Ahead. So in JS8 Call 1.0, 1.1, you would have to type your entire message in this box and then hit the transmit button. Now we only need to get started with the message before we hit the transmit button. So we'll uh, just select a group call there and we'll go ahead and start typing. This is the first part of my message. And I'll go ahead and hit the transmit. You see that it's going to take a full minute to transmit that out. And it crosses out what it's sending in each frame. Okay, so after that has started transmitting, I decide I want to add a little bit to that. I could just say this is the second part of my message. Well, cannot type today. And it will go ahead and pick that up and add it to the first part that we started transmitting. So you can see our time is back up to one minute. Uh, let's say I want to add something else. There we go. This is the third part of the message. And the transmit time has jumped up again because we keep adding to it. So it's kind of a really cool new way that we don't have to get the entire message typed in before we start transmitting. We decide we want to add something to the message. 
we can go ahead and do that. Now, the one place that uh, Type Ahead will not work, or actually a couple of places, it will not work in uh, messages that you're leaving for another station, and it will not work in relays. Both of those are what's referred to as checksummed messages. And if you're not familiar, checksum messages are a way for the sending and receiving station to verify that they have accurately uh, received the message as it was sent. So that's the reason that we can't use type ahead in those messages is because we do need an accurate checksum to send to the receiving station so that it knows it received the message accurately and in its entirety. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the new speedier modes. If you'll notice right up here in the top right hand corner, we can right click on that and we have normal, fast, and turbo modes. And you can see uh, approximately how many words per minute they're able to transmit. Now each mode, uh, as it gets faster, the bandwidth gets wider and the sensitivity becomes less. So normal mode can decode down to negative 23 dB, fast mode down to negative 20 dB, and turbo mode down to negative 17 dB. So we're trading uh, some sensitivity for speed, but it's still really cool with these new fast modes. Uh, before, each frame took 15 seconds to transmit. That same frame uh, in turbo mode only takes six seconds. So how do we use these new modes? Well, here's what uh, is suggested. We continue to use normal mode like we always have. But once we get into a QSO and we see that propagation is in our favor that day and we're decoding that station really well, maybe we suggest to the other station trying one of the faster modes. Now, you can... You know, you can do whatever you want. If you want to jump straight to turbo, jump straight to turbo and see if it works. If you want to move up just one step, you could jump up to the fast mode. If you're getting a good decode there, then you could progress on and try the turbo mode. Now, heartbeats are disabled uh, intentionally in the fast and the turbo mode. This is by design because, like I said, Jordan really intends for us to continue using it in normal mode on a day-to-day -day basis, but move to the faster modes when propagation is good between the sending and receiving stations. So now that you've had an overview, I'm sure you guys want to upgrade. Let's cover how to upgrade uh, from a previous version of JS8 to get one of the newer versions. And I'll cover how to uh, do a brand new install if you've never ran JS8 in the past. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, now I've jumped over to my mobile station. You can see that right up here because I still have uh, 2.0, the, the original 2.0 installed here, not the new Release Candidate 1. So what we want to do is we need to go ahead and uninstall JS8. So we'll use sudo apt-get space remove JS8 call. Go ahead and hit the return key, and it's just going to ask us, are we sure we want to do this? Let's go ahead and press yes there, and return. And now JS8 call is removed from our system. Now, all of your settings that you had previously are still saved. Uh, it doesn't take away the settings when you just remove the application. So let's clear that screen out. Now, Depending on when you're viewing this video, there could be a, a couple of different ways to download this software. The official download source is at jsacall.com, and I'll leave a link to this down in the description below. If that's the case, you would just go ahead and click on Download, and you would see a list of the download files here. Now, if you notice, though, while I'm doing this video, we're still at 1.1. So that's not going to help us this morning, but I'm sure 2.0 will be here soon. While 2.0 is in beta testing, you'll need to head over to the groups.io website. And again, I'll leave a link to this down in the description below. When you get there, you'll need to come to the wiki page, and then you want to click on beta testing. 
scrolling down the page, I'm looking for the one for the Raspberry Pi, so I'm just going to right-click on that and say Copy the Link Location. Let's head back over to the Pi. Let's move to our Downloads directory. I'm going to list that out just because I'm not sure what else I've got in there. Yep, I've got the 2.0 development. So let's use the wget command and paste in that link that we just copied. Now it's going to put a lot of extra stuff. I'm not real sure why this has happened, but I'm just going to start backspacing until I get back to the dot deb. So I'm taking all of that off, and now I'm just left with the dot deb at the end. And we'll go ahead and hit the return key. Give that just a couple of seconds to download. Clear that screen back out. And the next thing we're going to run is sudo dpkg-i. We'll just start typing JS8. Hit our tab key. Oh, I forgot I've got two files in here, so I'll need to put one more letter, uh, which is the RC1. And when that auto-completes, we'll go ahead and hit the return button. And that would complete the installation of the new 2.0. Now, if this was your very first time installing it, you might run into some dependency issues trying to get this installed. If you do, we'll run sudo apt space dash dash fix dash broken space install. You would go ahead and hit return here it would correct those dependency issues uh, that you saw when you tried to do it again. And then you would need to run the same command we did up here again. So that command, we would just run that again after uh, fixing the broken package. Go ahead and hit return, and that would get it installed and running on your system. All right, so we'll just minimize that out. And I'm going to double-click my JS8 call icon here. And when this opens up, you'll see that we're running 2.0 RC1. Okay, and right up here at the top, you'll see version 2.0.0 RC1. So there you go, guys. There's an overview of what's new inside of 2.0 and how to install it or upgrade. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up before you head off. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And we will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.